I'm scared to talk about this topic. <laughs> Don't be. Um, Don't be. So I had an idea to talk about cancel culture. I think I already knew kind of some of your views on it. And I know we've mentioned it before a few times, but um, I had just noticed recently every podcast I listen to, people are still hesitant to say what they really think and feel for fear of being cancelled, um, which is just crazy. Because a lot of these people have really good takes, great opinions, and yes, they might not always be right about everything, but they shouldn't be afraid to share their opinion and have a debate about it. I mean, that's the po- I feel like that's the point of life is that we should be sharing mm. how we think and feel and and figure out if we've got it right or wrong. And you can't do that if you can't say what you think and feel. You can't have the opportunity to kind of have a discussion and change your mind potentially because you're so scared of saying the wrong thing and getting cancelled. So I kind of wanted to touch on that because it also feels like people are sick and tired of it that they're going quite far the other way. Um, so it's almost like the swing, this pendulum. It doesn't really, like, there's never this, like, happy medium. There's always, like, very far one way or very far the other way. So, I, yeah, I thought maybe we could talk about it and, and see where we go with it. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you're 100% correct that people are, are sick and tired of being, you know, having to... Be so cautious about what subject you you touch or what you say about it for fear of being cancelled. Um, so I definitely see more and more people actually coming out and saying exactly what they want to say. Yeah. Um, and let's deal with the consequences because none of these well very few people come out with um, something that is completely wrong or malicious or etc and those people will be taken care of or they should be taken care of what is happening what has happened over the last couple of years is, is is because everyone is so afraid we it has become acceptable for the fringe, the lunatics, <laughs> the, whatever you want to call them, to kind of step into the public square and spew their nonsense and nobody dare silence them. Yeah. And that pendulum that you mentioned, you know, I think if we go and look through history, that is, that is very true. Yeah, people are either one side of the spectrum and over time they kind of that pendulum swings to the other side. And I think your question, well, why can't we just sit here in the happy <laughs> medium? Yeah. Um, and I think the, the answer is simply why um, roller coasters go up and down, you know, because <laughs> if it was just flat, it would not be yeah. fun and nobody would ride them. So it is part of, of I think, growth. How are we going to grow if we don't get to fuck it up every now and then yeah. and learn from our mistakes and then progress and move on to the next one? Yeah. Um, yeah makes sense. Anyway, so that's on a high level. I, there, there, there's so many, so many levels where this is playing out in politics, yeah. um, in, in, in business. And then I think just in general, how um, we as human beings interact with each other. I mean, even down to that level, it has become um, it has become uh, a minefield. Yeah, I almost feel like it seeps into, as you say, even the personal interactions. Uh, if I'm with a group of friends and someone says something that might be considered cancelable i'm even like you can't say that you know (laughs) even if it's something that i'm quite comfortable being around or listening to i'm so scared that someone else is going to hear them and it's 
going to be bad for them. They might lose their job. They might, you know, like the, there's such far reaching consequences to the whole idea of cancel culture and what it can do to a person's life. Um, so yeah. you understand why it does silence even the big brains and the people who know what they're talking about and have all the research to back what they're saying. Um, a big one that springs to mind is Jordan Peterson. I don't agree with everything the man says, um, but I think he's got a lot of solid opinions and even he kind of had to disappear for a while because his strong opinions got him cancelled. And yeah, it's scary. <laughs> Yeah, look, it's um, ob obviously the, the more well-known you are, the higher the risk, et cetera, um, to get cancelled. Um, but it, it is interesting how it affects everyone, yeah. even even people like us who would like, well, who's, go who's going to want to cancel me and yeah. what will they benefit from <laughs> exactly. it? Uh, etc etc I've, yeah. I've had stupid stupid ideas and opinions my whole life you know it's, there's nothing new here in terms of but i do feel that um, um the the more prominent people that are um, starting to speak out about it now yeah um you know jordan peterson's a very good example uh he brought a whole bunch of people together not too long ago um, with similar ideas and the whole concept and the idea is, is, is listen, we, we must get back to, to a place where we are comfortable to share and voice opinions and differ from each yeah. other, um, um, respectfully and, you know, all of those things, um, and learn and progress. Yeah. Um, I think some, there were some really, really prominent voices. Uh, in, involved in, in that. Um, and I see even in the last week or two, prominent people have started to to tackle some, some really um, important subjects in terms of in terms of uh, things that I think would generally be considered no go topics. Yeah. For example, the education system. Yeah. Where the quality is that, where of is that happening? In the US. Okay. Um, so it's on multiple fronts that that is happening at the moment. But um, um, these obviously all of the voices and opinions about. Um, just look at how the pro-Palestinian protesters are behaving themselves mm -hmm. in the name of peace. Yeah. Uh, and look at their behavior, etc., etc. And more and more people are actually comfortable to come and speak out about it. Yeah. Um, these it, it, anyway. So, so I, I think there's a groundswell taking place. Yeah. It Hopefully. does feel like there's some bubbling. <laughs> Coming. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and internationally, what... I mean, this isn't in any single location. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. We were talking about the new Argentinian president and yes. the Italian prime minister coming out and making some public statements and uh, the guy in the Netherlands whose yes. I mean, his party was even called like anti-refugee or something. Like, there, there's some people saying yes. um, some quite, I don't know, like no, striking, absolutely. taking quite striking stands on things. Yes. So, um, so I think that this is just the beginning of it, you know. So, um, and, and is it positive? Um, I definitely think so. Yeah. It feels like something needs to happen. Some, like something needs to change. Yeah. Um, but then my concern is the swing <laughs> the other way. <laughs> Well, does it, um, maybe you can elaborate on why that concerns you. Well, I mean, personally speaking, I'm an immigrant <laughs> and it feels like the whole world is moving towards an anti-immigrant. <laughs> um, so that's a per one of the personal things that I feel might affect me. 
Um, yeah, I just worry that things... I, I, I know that they kind of need to because, I mean, with anything, when you look at... I don't know how to talk about it without sounding like I'm supporting one thing or another and that's not where I stand. But like with anything, because there's been something done wrong for so long, there needs to be quite a drastic measure to correct it, which I understand. But sometimes those measures can go too far. And then at some point, there's going to have to be another swing in the other direction, which again, wouldn't be good. So <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so I, I I don't think we must be afraid of the pendulum will swing too far the yeah. other side. The other, I think the sooner we actually get the pendulum to start going <laughs> the other side, the less the the less disruptive it will be. Yeah. And and and, and we will get to to uh, hopefully a place of progress. Yeah. Because I think that's what everyone's after. Yeah. Uh, you know, if I if I just think, look around, we we live in a, in a time of you know more abundance than ever. Mm -hmm. There's more food on the planet than there's ever been. There's more this. There's more uh, all of the things. You know, we've got more access to information and education and all of these things than ever before. And yet, it feels like we are kind of going in the wrong way. Yeah. So can we get back to a point where we we actually recognize that and start uh, start making the most of it? Yeah. Um, w will there be a few cases where the pendulum swings too far? Yes. Yeah. Has that always been the case? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um because I think, I think what you you're afraid of disruption to your own personal lifestyle. Yeah, of course. <laughs> is that is that correct? No, I mean that it's not a... just that, but I but that definitely does affect. It obviously affects me personally. Yeah, yeah. So. No, of course, I, and, and 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 it's not not just you. I think it's anybody, any one of us. I mean, I don't want my my lifestyle to be affected yeah negatively negatively <laughs> i can think of a number of ways in which it can be positively uh but but so, so in other words i think it's a it's a it's a natural concern yeah. in terms of swinging the other way what what would you like to see happen in in the next year but this is my thing is i don't think that there is any kind of like perfect outcome or perfect world where everyone benefits that's it's just there's no way that that happens so yeah, yeah. so I, I mean selfishly i want to as you say i would like to benefit but but, but um yeah i don't know i don't know i i also don't disagree with uh, some of the stricter laws coming into place for immigration in a, especially in the country that i live in um i'm not sure i'm not sure what i want i'm just a little bit anxious about what might happen over the next few years <laughs> so so what do you what do you think is likely to happen in the next year i mean just looking at um kind of like the environment around you and so on and trains is there, is there something that kind of stands out for you and you think, wow, you know what this, I'm comfortable to say that I predict that this or that might happen. Is there anything that stand out? No, I think probably fewer people will be coming into this country. Um, I mean, hopefully fewer people illegally coming into this country and putting a strain on all of the public <laughs> services. Um, I know that there's a huge concern, though, that it's kind of twofold because of the NHS is already under so much strain and having too many people come in and 
put pressure on the NHS is not a good thing. But at the same time, a lot of the immigrants that are coming in are working for the NHS and they're very short staffed yeah. and they need those people coming in. So there is this balance that needs to be reached. Um, yeah. A lot of people are saying if they just increased the NHS salaries, they would have more local people <laughs> taking those jobs. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Which which puts more strain on the NHS system because it's yeah, publicly possible. funded. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I mean, it's if... a it's a very yeah it's a very common thing. It doesn't yeah. matter which country you look at. I, yeah. I, I think they have a very similar problem in Canada. I've said for a very long time that I'm, but I'm maybe in a much more privileged position than a lot of people that I'm quite happy to pay for a medical visit and for any medication I might need, or I don't think it should be fully funded by the government. And I think we've spoken about this before when we had our chat about taxes. And mm. um, I think that would make a huge difference, even if it was a nominal fee, something really small that people have to pay up front maybe they can get refunded if they really are in a dire situation but yeah i don't think it should be free because uh treatment costs someone money so <laughs> they have to it has to be paid by someone <laughs> yeah yeah look um the healthcare system is a complicated one uh, yeah. it's just the most long discussions one, about yeah Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So one of the things that I think is, um, you know, just kind of looking ahead at next year, I think that we, we're going to see more turmoil yeah. than we've seen in the last few years. Um, and, and that is based on the fact that there's a, a bunch of countries, the bigger countries, that are having elections next year. Yeah. Including the UK, the US. Um, I think they are in total about 20 countries. Yeah. That have... Isn't South Africa also having one? Yeah, South Africa <laughs> is also one. Just not one of the bigger one. countries that you're referring to. Yeah, yeah, it's not <laughs> one of the bigger countries. Well, obviously that, that will in some way affect me. But, yeah. um, um, but I think of the the bigger economies, the more prominent countries. I mean, if you've got the UK, you've got the US. I think Australia. If you think about G seven countries, um, could be could be mistaken, but maybe Germany as well. I'm not sure. There's quite anyway. So, mm. um, and in all of those countries, you see the same kind of. Uh, People are uneasy with what's happening at the moment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Um, and I think that people are largely frustrated by the lack of um, proper leadership. Yeah. Well, I was going to say I've heard a lot of people saying democracy is such a farce. You're not actually getting a choice in. <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah, it's absolutely it's really, true. You're not really voting. That is absolutely. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It yeah. is a. Uh, it is a, it is a scam. Yeah, it's it, like it shit candidate number a... one or shit candidate number two. Which one would you like? <laughs> correct. Yeah. Correct. And, <laughs> and and how they make us believe that we actually voted for these people yeah. is <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, anyway. So, but 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 that is. Um, I think who, who was it that? Uh, I think it was Winston Churchill that said that um, democracy is the worst form of government, except for all the others. So, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's a little abolish bit a... the government. Let's just get rid of it. <laughs> yes, now we're on to something. That oh, I is, did, I did that just finish reading Drug Lord with yes. Doug, uh, okay. by Doug Casey, um, and I researched yes. him a little bit, which is quite interesting. The author, because obviously he's got a, a, a feeling about the U.S. government and governments around the world. Um, so that was uh, a fascinating, fascinating for me. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I, I recently heard Doug say that um, they, um, they they had, I think, seven seven novels planned in the series. They've only done three because um, it's become impossible for them 
to, you know, the, the reality is catching up with the fiction. Yeah. Reality is stranger too quickly. than fiction, yeah. Yes, you know, because um, kind of like the progression yeah. of the main protagonist in the, in, in, in the series. Uh, anyway, but yeah, it's, um, it is quite crazy if you kind of listen to, yeah. or, um, listen to Doug's take about this and he's obviously had a long yes. um, career in experiencing a whole bunch of different types of governments and so on. Um, but look, we all would be better off with less government interference in our lives. Yeah. That, that is a fact. But back to um, mm -hmm. what we think important things that could happen in the next 12 months. Um, if, if, there, if there is turmoil, is there a possibility of it escalating into war? You mean like civil wars, like war, like within countries? Well, that's, uh, that's an interesting <laughs> option that you mentioned there. Um, there's obviously war between countries like we see I mean, that's happening, happening at the moment. Ukraine and Russia and Israel and Gaza. And... Yeah, that's become so, you know, Ukraine, Russia, they, nobody pays attention anymore. Well, isn't the when... US about to stop funding them? <laughs> well, Zelensky was, uh, was in Washington earlier this week, I, I believe, yeah. or was it last week already, you know, begging for more money. And, uh, yeah. uh, but correct. So people are kind of, but it's so sad that we get so desensitized to kind of these things. But that's been the history of mankind for forever. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned another interesting option, and that is of civil civil war within countries. Mm -hmm. Or people, do, do you think it's possible that you can see uh, something akin to the, to the French Revolution, where the people just get sick and tired and... Mm -hmm. And revolt to the point mm. where they actually take over is that possible in this um, day and age i don't know and and what would the out like what what would a possible outcome be like i just don't understand what would end something like that i don't feel like there would be like a <laughs> resolution I can see that people are fired up enough that they could start turning to mm. violence and attacking government buildings and things like that. But I, I don't know what that would achieve. Yeah, no. Look, in terms of what it would achieve. So I think if you, if you, if you want to overthrow the government, mm. there must be people ready capable you can take yeah. over um and give direction yeah now if you look at all these <laughs> military coups that has happened predominantly in africa and south america yeah. it seems to be like the flavor of the month a military coup <laughs> but then is lots of theories be... a dictator that kind of takes over yeah, yeah, in yeah. those instances well, it isn't he usually funded by the CIA <laughs> or the, um, yeah, look, there's very few of them that hasn't been, that has been proved to have not been funded by hmm. some kind of government uh, elsewhere. Uh, anyway, so, so the idea is, is people will overthrow the government in, um, replacing it with something better mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then stabilizing things and allowing yeah. democracy to mm -hmm. continue along its path. Although I don't, I don't know if there's a really good track record for that. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I certainly don't hope with, we see something like that happening, but I do feel like it is probably closer 
than it's been for, I don't know, 40, 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I also think that on an, on a, on a few other fronts, you know, kind of like in the economical, um, <clears throat> front, there's going to be potential turmoil, which may have, uh, an unintended consequence of it actually escalating to to something more political. Because mm -hmm. I don't think these things kind of work in isolation. You know, no. the economy doesn't just go wrong and there's no political it's all ramifications. Con connected. So the yeah, it's very, very connected. Now with the Red Sea and the Suez Canal and all of that, they... The, the BP and MESC and all of those are having to go the long route and so their prices go up and that affects the whole world. And <laughs> Yeah, what is even happening there? I mean, I um, don't really know. Uh, <laughs> is, is it really just a, a question of people flexing their muscles a little bit and, uh, or is there, is, there, is there other stuff going on that we don't know enough about? Like yeah. This? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I think it's going to be an interesting, interesting year. Um, I, I certainly hope that you are 100% correct in that normal people will start finding their voice again. Yeah. And feeling and, comfortable to have conversations like this, which I am yes. still a little bit uncomfortable to have. <laughs> but um, I mean, the only way that we yeah. can figure things out is by talking about it and <laughs> correct yeah. correct and not just adopting because because some of these things that we um we some of these rules that we adhere to we can't even remember why they were put in place yeah um you know who, who decided and what was the reason it was decided that we are not allowed to speak about A, B, C, D, and E, yeah. whatever they are, you know? Um, and, and, and that's quite scary. That's quite scary. That is, that, that is very much how I think socialism and communism get a foothold in a society. Mm -hmm. hmm. So, we're going to protest for free speech and placards. <laughs> and, well, that's, uh, it always brings me back to that um, quote that I've heard of Elon Musk saying that they keep repeating on BBC is free speech is allowing people you don't like to say things you don't like. And yeah, I, there's nothing wrong with that. There's lots of people that say things I don't like and doesn't make me want to uh, make them lose their job and <laughs> suffer and... <laughs> I think uh, you know, we need to be comfortable with hearing things that we don't necessarily agree with and then having the opportunity to say what we do think about it. Absolutely. I, I follow people like that on uh, on X, um, who I actually have nothing in common with, don't like, don't agree with their, their viewpoints, etc. But I specifically follow them for that for that exact reason. Mm -hmm. is, um well, I've got, to, I've got to be exposed to that. I've got to listen to that. And every now and then I want to unfollow uh, somebody and I kind of have to sit back and remember why I'm doing it in the first place. Yeah. Um, to be a bit more informed and to hopefully learn. Uh, anyway. So hopefully uh, and glue. we're going to start to cancel cancel culture. <laughs> yes. Encourage free speech and healthy debate and talking about things that we care about or don't care about i don't know yeah cool definitely thanks so definitely. Much. something lighter next week thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yes <Okay. laughs>